<laughs> Do you even know 29 countries and in Tokyo at the same time? Can you believe it? Right? I'm wearing snake skin. It's giving Harry Styles on tour, baby. Uh, uh, got me upside down. My name is Kyle Clark, I'm an actor, I'm a presenter, I am an entrepreneur and just an all-round superstar. I'm from Johannesburg, the city of gold, you know, Joburg is the place where to be, but also like predominantly in South Africa, this is where you make the most money. I've been working in the entertainment and media industry for 14 years now. It has been a journey. I've been a presenter, I've been a broadcaster on your radio shows. I am a full-time content creator also, which I just used as a side hustle. So we're at the studio shooting for the suit brand that I've been working with for the past year, and I feel like my fashion has completely transcended. For me specifically, I am feeling very guarded in this moment because my fashion sense is transcending and it's something different than it was before. I'm transcending as a human. And everyone on set is just like not, you know, no one's with it. No one's getting the shot. So I felt a little bit irritated. I'm Amto and I'm a queer creative who loves all things broadcast because I am a broadcast charm. On air, on screen or online, I'm just killing it. I started in the creative industry very young, straight out of high school. I entered the Y Academy, which was like a platform to help young creatives get into the radio space. How are you doing though? Well, I'm all right. I'm in long time of C. Yes, so the girl has been busy. Well, so, she's you know, good. A little, but it's also taking away from life in, in mm -hmm. general. I met on tour a couple of years ago, actually, at YFM. Um, I had an interview and she, I think he was a show producer back then. Very timid, a very friendly person and, you know, our friendship grew and business relationship. And now he is now a mother of a house and he's running his own video show and he's just doing his own thing. So how have you been, darling? Oh my gosh. Busy, 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 busy. A lot. Um, doing a lot as well. I think I'm stretching myself too thin. Mm. Um, I started doing a piano show and I'm yeah. producing. I saw that the other day. Yes. Yeah. And then I'm also doing the radio show, which starts like 5 a.m. in the morning. Which is amazing, which we're all obsessed with. I just started off with producing. Never thought of myself as talent or wanted to be in front of anything or on the mic. Just wanted to be behind the scenes doing my thing, you know, just killing the game. But I guess I also had a different calling. Oh, but I'm working myself to the bone. There's nothing wrong, isn't it like building? That's you get true. to a specific point where you're like, I have worked enough and now I can chill. Young Mto has really informed how Mto now really moves and thinks. 
Yangam Tour was in a space where there was no freedom to be queer. It takes a lot to go through that as a child. And when you get older, you kind of get into a space where you want to undo. So that's where I am now. I am living for that Yangam Tour that really never got to see the light of day with expressing himself as a feminine being. My name is Lula Odiba. Put everything after the Divas and the dollars because baby, you know we all about this money. I'm a 25 year old, lesbian, black, fine, chocolate dripping individual who resides in Johannesburg. Uh, I'm a radio presenter, TV presenter. I'm a DJ, MC, voiceover artist, and the list goes on. But I'm, I just think I'm fabulous. I'm sure you agree, and I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? I am Ashley Erasmus, also known as King Ashley. I am a personal trainer. I have my own like booty shorts range that just launched in Rosebank and Egg. And I think also one of the coolest things is that I get to manage my superstar girlfriend. I'm one of the freshest hosts there are in South Africa. Lunchtime, lunch league, 12 to three, let's ski. and I met at a club in Soweto. It was a crazy experience for me because I'd been straight for 24 years of my life at that point. I'd never looked at a girl, I'd never even experimented or kissed a girl. Like girls just, I didn't find them attractive like that. Maybe 98% of the girls are straight till they see me, they're like, oh, Long Island, fun. You know what I'm saying? So she was one of those and uh, we fell in love after some time and we live together, we have a little cat together. We're just like a, a thriving lesbian relationship without all the drama. Hey! Whoa. Are you here at the Dropbox, man? Of course, always. <laughs> <laughs> How was that shoot? Did you love it? Surely. Oh man, it was amazing! Did Look you at take that! Any photos? Yes. I took some great pictures. I am Carl Park's mother. I am his manager, his friend, and just a bit about Kyle. Um, when Carl was born, I thought I was carrying a girl. It's like carried completely different to my oldest son. And obviously, this child came out screaming, blasting out, literally like arms and legs all out there. And I think as a mom, I knew a long time ago that Carl was different. I don't know how I feel about this suit brand any longer. I just feel like my fashion sense is changing. Oh, you don't have to worry about that, eh? What? I found another brand for you. Who? Khalid's. Really? Yes. Did you send my profile? Yes. Three? I sent you a media kit and we're good to go with that, eh? When Carl came out at the age of 15, 16, I think it was, um, it wasn't really a shock for me. I actually thought he would tell me much later. So the shocky part, I might add, was that he had come out so much earlier than what most people do. I think a lot of gay guys and girls come out when they're in their 20s or later or even 30s or 40. But I think it's his strength and his braveness and him wanting to attack the world, basically with who he was and what he, you know, his foresight for his future was gonna be, that he just thought, let me get this over and done with. Listen, we need to go. Now? Yeah, we need to go. Can you get done there? Okay, let's go. Have you got something to fish my wardrobe? Yes? Yes. Naturally, at 16 years old, coming out, I thought to myself, now that I'm out, everyone needs to know. Everyone needs to know when I shout it from the rooftops, I'm a homo, do you know what I mean? Like, I wanted to be that girl. 
Like I wanted to be that person that just wanted to tell the whole world. The thing about my mom is that at that moment she stopped me. What I realized was that she was protecting me from all the hate that I was about to receive within the next five years. She believed that the world was not ready for the queer community. And looking back now, I mean, what are we? 17 years since I've came out and I can comfortably say that the world was never ready. Mom, have you seen the diary for this week? I know it's crazy, eh? That's why I actually want to talk to you about it. Okay, what do we need Just to go be, through? It's quite hectic. Well, there's um, your Harvest Table shoot. You know, that's a monthly thing and we've got a three-year contract with that already. I have to get a date for the photographer. But I don't have the capacity because I have to go to Cape Town this weekend. So can we do it when you come back from Cape Town? You know, my mom jumped on me with this journey. About, I would say about six years ago, she became my full-time manager, but she started working for me about eight years ago when I started the company as my managing director. You know, a lot of people say like, do not mix family and business. But what I came to realize is that me and my mom are exactly the same person. I've got exciting news for you. What? I just got a call for, for an event. Yeah. Oh, the Clark Collection. For real? Yeah. Oh, I haven't got the full brief yet, but it's absolutely, it sounds absolutely amazing. But I definitely need you to be there just to get your vision going through the whole thing. I own a creative digital agency called Clark Media. And then I opened up a separate family business owned company called the Clark Collection. We do luxury events from product launches to weddings, uh, funerals even. Come to me, babe, I'm about to give you the most dramatic exit that you could have ever thought about in your entire life. <laughs> and so, Mama Jock received the call and they gave me an incredible opportunity to just have this free reign. It is exciting. I know. Can you imagine us, the Clark Collection? <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. I mean, the services that we can actually give to them as well. The self-development that both of us went through during that first four years of his journey is where the growth and the togetherness came. And that is such an important part because it even helped us, besides in business, it helped us in our relationship of him being queer. I think that's it. I think... I can't handle any more information, please. I can't do it any longer than this. I'll just send it on the WhatsApp to you then. Okay, please okay. put on your seatbelt. All right. Let's go. Sure. It's been quite a day, hey? I'm going to have a moment going. to breathe. Now this girl needs a little sun. Uh-huh. So I want to start a lingerie line. Wow. Right? Lingerie. For like you say? So particularly for queer people. Okay. I want like the non-binary identity. That's amazing. The trans identities, the queer identities, just to feel comfortable walking into a store and purchasing. I want to take that one thing about fashion that makes me feel very insecure and very beside myself and turn it into something that I can be proud of. So I thought, let's come up with an underwear lingerie line where we can, you know, they have our necessities as queer beings. They have the right kind of underwear we need, because it's not just normal. We've got gaffs, we've got binders, we've got packing underwear. There's so many things that are needed for queer individuals, but are not available or accessible very near to you. Every time I go to a store and I want to buy something feminine, something like a, a, a bodysuit, I want to buy a dress, Every time I'm there, because I'm male presenting it just in by biology, mm. I get the looks and I get the, oh, yeah. what are you doing here? You're not comfortable. Yeah, you, this is not your space that you should be playing in. So I think because I'm so tired of that anxiety, I want to allay those fears by having like a port where pe queer people can come and get lingerie, feel sexy, get the shapewear, normal underwear with gaffs and all of that stuff. We have to physically make our own gas in order if we want to give like that very feminine silhouette we have to make our own things and that's not fair because everyone else just goes to the store you pick up uh, uh, whatever you need and you're out with us it just comes with so much anxiety and trauma i'm tired of that mm -hmm. in as much as i love fashion um i haven't had the best of experience with it particularly when it comes to just shopping for things as simple as underwear right and what I've realized is if it's happening to me, then it's happening to many other queer individuals out there where you go into a shop 
um, and you're male presenting perhaps by biology and you're in the women's section you know and you're shopping for things uh, even if you want to buy a bra because you want a pad or whatever the case may be you're made to feel uncomfortable or you get eyes or just that whole experience is very traumatic for a queer being so i want to call it nb for non-binary okay yes. love that right so it's nb by Moto. yes Obsessed. I can you hear it? No, I, I'm I, like I think it's. Amazing. I envision it like a Victoria's Secret, but for the girls. The concept of being non-binary really only came into being once uh, when I went to my first ball. I then started figuring out that my identity is not necessarily the same as everyone else. And then I would think of like icons like Grace Jones, you know, people who are gender ambiguous, and that felt more homely to me where there is no box, there is no um, place that you could put me to try and make yourself feel comfortable because I don't belong in there. <laughs> you know? I'm obsessed with the idea. I think it's going to be great. We don't really have that locally. And you sort of exude to that like, high fashion. And I think it will be so great for you to sort of like evolve into that. Yeah, I definitely see it happen. But I feel like I'm going to make mistakes, especially when it comes to making garments. So I need you to get help me out. And I always knew that I would find myself in fashion somehow, just not the conventional route, you know, not fashion school and all of that stuff and getting Elle magazines. And it, it, it didn't have that start for me, but the, the story is just as beautiful. Everything is like handmade. Yes. It took me- A handmade? Handmade. Everything is like beat, hand beaded. So it took me over years to get to the sort of quality oh, yeah. and understanding, you know, you, it, 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 it's a gradual progression, you know, you take things. And there's no way of fast tracking it. No, you can't fast track. I can't Uber really eat some skill. <laughs> okay. okay. You need to learn your consumer and understand what they want. And for me, quality, packaging, everything is important. And once you know who is your client, I mean, I basically think, you know, Tor stepping into this part of his life, it's amazing. You know, he's always sort of gave me a very focused, girly sort of energy. And, you know, for him understanding who he is and the sort of a community that he's in and actually want to take leadership and being a part and becoming an advocate, you know, for this. And I think we need pe more people like him, you know, to step in and sort of voice out. And I think he will do absolutely amazing. I think he will do great. He sort of looks like he has done all the research that he needs. I really need this, um, mm -hmm. but then yeah, we're also going to have to touch base another time. Definitely. Thank you very much for stopping by. Thank you so much for having it's me. It's always a pleasure seeing you, darling. Mwah. Mwah. I'm going to let you know then once the lingerie has started, okay. you know, coming. And you're going to invite me to the launch? Absolutely. That's not even And a send me a piece. Oh, we'll do. <laughs> but who? Mother is cuddling by herself at night, so who is she going to be dressed up for? <laughs> I'm playing Mel Arche. Arche. Let's knock it. For me, a problem that I face with dating such a famous superstar is obviously you get the girls fangirling and you know they everybody wants a piece of Lula. Tricky when everybody wants your girl because at some point you're like, shit, am I like I'm seeing the girls that want you and you're like, damn, like is she sure she still just wants me kind of thing? There's no way my girlfriend that is dating me is standing here looking at another girl like this because what are you doing? Do you not respect me? Like, what is going on? You know what, I'm out. I don't want to watch this. For the sake of my anger that is already going through the roof. I'm like, I don't want to stand here and watch this any longer because what am I going to do? I'm just going to irritate myself some more. 
my kids, like, what did I do? Ah, maybe what that's into him, I can say maybe, whatever. And in the split moment, I'm like, what's going on? Is she taking a call? Does she need to go pee? Usually she tell me these kind of things. Tima phone, what am I? What's all I was wondering? Knowing how the entertainment industry is with people cheating and things like that, so it becomes a bit tricky. But you know she's my friend. So why did you leave the club? Imagine how that makes me look. So I'm gonna stand there and look, watch you look at this girl like this. Imagine how that makes I was just getting more and more angry. I could literally just feel my head about to explode. I was going to walk on that stage and rip out the speakers or something crazy like that because I cannot stand to see my girl that I'm dating busy looking at another girl like this because for me, I'm just like, I feel disrespected. So I left. I went home. I wanted nothing more to do with that evening.